What's going on guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video. So in today's video, it's gonna be slightly uh, different to workout nutrition and lifestyle, but I just wanted to jump on here and just give you uh, guys a bit of an insight on uh, the hair transplant that I went through uh, about a week ago. So it was a week ago as of tomorrow. Um, so I have a load of questions from guys that pop through the DMs on my Instagram. So if you don't actually follow me on Instagram, it is right here on the screen, so make sure you go over and follow that. And also make sure you like, like and subscribe to this uh, to the video as well. It also helps the channel grow. Um, so I'm just gonna jump, jump straight into it and basically give you an insight of like why I did it, why I chose the company that I kind of went for in Turkey rather than getting it done in the UK. So sit back and relax and uh, we'll get into it. So we're gonna start off with the first point of view was I actually noticed my hair starting thinning when I was about 27, 28. It was around the time that I was working a lot in London. Um, I wasn't actually going bald or anything. It was just more sort of, just my hair wasn't as thick as, as it was when I was younger. And there was baldness in my family. My dad was bald, um, but he was completely bald at the age of sort of 23, 22. So I'm now 30. So I've done pretty well in terms of keeping my hair. Um, so once I sort of noticed that, I kind of, had a look around, uh, a couple of my friends have had it done as well, so that kind of helped me choose uh, where to go, either in the UK or abroad or anything like that. So that was kind of the first initial point. Um, and then once I sort of kind of grasped that I wanted to go ahead with the procedure and uh, do it a couple of years on, um, I actually reached out to a couple of companies, mainly um, over overseas, because I thought, you know, for sort of money situation and because uh, they charge quite a lot of money in terms uh, to compare to sort of uh, Turkey, Istanbul, wherever you kind of choose to go for, to rather than to the UK, it is pretty um, competitive on that sort of price point. So the initial contact I had with uh, the company called, which was now here time. So I'll tag them below. You can kind of find the descri uh, details in the, in the description. Um, so I just reached out to them kind of saying my sort of situation. Um, they actually give you um, a coordinator, which will be based uh, that kind of look after the UK kind of people that contact them because obviously they're kind of global. They get people from all over the world. Um, so that was really helpful at the start. You have like an initial conversation with them. You get to send uh, your pictures of your hairline and kind of like the look that you want to kind of go through. And then they kind of recommend um, how many graphs that you need from there. And it, also um, if you're eligible to have a hair transplant. So I thought, you know, when I first initially sort of thought about a hair transplant, that anybody could have it, but that's not the case. So they basically take the grafts from the back of your head, which is the donor area, <clears throat> and then obviously replant them into the sort of the areas that you want to sort of focus on or where they think that you might be going bald or receding. So that was kind of like a bit of an eye opener to me. So they don't just take anybody, um, you know, into a hair transplant think yeah we're going to just butch your head and just give you some hair so that was kind of the first point um, don't get me wrong i chose to do this i didn't it, like this wasn't like a paid advertisement or anything like that i actually paid them the money as well obviously with a bit of discount to sort of uh, promote on instagram but i paid ma ma majority of of the of the price point so there's different there's three different packages that you can go for which was a bronze silver and like a gold i'll put the little picture of the price point which was here so this might be different uh till to today today or whatever uh, but this is what they kind of sent me at the start so this is kind of what got me interested in terms of like the pricing compared to like some of the guys that i spoke to um in in the uk so that's what got my interest there I was a bit skeptical because obviously it's abroad, you don't really know what's going on, but obviously with social media these days, they kind of show a lot of insights on the backgrounds of like what they do and what the clinics are like and things like that. So uh, that was kind of helpful as well. And also, um, you know, it's, it's quite a daunting thing for a lot of guys to go through. So if you are watching this and you're thinking about it, uh, make sure you just do your research for sure. I literally researched quite a, quite a few people, but um, yeah, I went with these guys and thought, you know what, let's, let's go for it, let's take the plunge. Uh, so going into that actual procedure, so once uh, you uh, book your flights, they actually um, provide transport and obviously the hotel with it and, and all, all basically all the trimmings with it. So this is kind of the experience that I kind of uh, doing this video for because a lot of people messaged me and was like, oh, how much did it cost? Where did you go? How was it? I've heard bad things and things to this day. How I, the experience from day one that I got there was they left my flat and went to Istanbul and came back with 
none better than I've ever experienced before. I'm not just saying that because obviously I'm doing a video, but um, it was so smooth. So I would literally land, I would text the coordinator on the WhatsApp saying, I'm here at this point, they would send me a point to sort of, uh, you know, meet the, the driver, which would then they would come and give you, uh, um, pick you up, sorry, for, with a basically like a, a mini bus, which is kind of like a fancy mini bus. They had like drinks in there, they had food, because uh, obviously where, where the airport is in Istanbul to the hotel was about an hour's journey. Um, so you kind of want to be as comfortable as possible and obviously come off a flight, depending on where you are in the world that come in. I'm only four hours away from Istanbul, so, but some of the guys were about, you know, all over the world from like American things. So I can imagine they wanted to be in a most relaxing place possible. So once you get to the hotel, it is actually a five star hotel. It was a Movin Pick uh, hotel, which as you can see, it is absolutely insane. The facilities itself with like the spa um, and the gym there was just I've never experienced before. I didn't really get to enjoy um, that so much. Obviously, you can't work out or anything like that when you've actually had your procedure uh, done or anything like that. You can't go into the sauna or the swimming pool. So that was good to kind of just get there on the Monday and just kind of, I got into the gym early Tuesday morning uh, just to kind of trial it basically. Um, so yeah, uh, so once uh, you land into, uh, once you checked into your hotel, so I checked in on a Monday night, they then, text you again and say like your pickup point is a uh, pickup time is this time um, so I left there at 7 30 in the morning they met you they accommodate you with breakfast as well with the hotel um, and then once uh, they picked us up they took us to one of their clinics where you have the consultation uh, that's where we go through you know the sort of hairline that you want you they look at your your head as it as itself like your scalp and things um, then you go through like payment and if you have any basically any questions in terms of sort of like the procedure itself So when I got to the clinic, it was that I thought it was just gonna be like one doctor um, Or one surgeon for example just looking at you here But I literally had about four or five people coming around looking at my head and looking at my scalp So on the Tuesday I was supposed to go and have the operation But once they looked at my head and analyzed it, I actually had a bit of dermatitis on the back of my skull um, basically it was just inflamed and a bit red so Stupidly, not stupidly, but a bit gussingly, I thought that I wasn't going to have the, the operation itself. So they said they wouldn't operate on it because they didn't want to risk infection and things like that. So that kind of made me like angry at the time, but then also reassure, reassured me that they're not just going to go through and just like butcher my head and just like kind of make it worse and such. So um, long story short, we um, had another conversation with the doctors and said, um, you know, they wanted me to just stay a couple of extra days. So they put me up on the hotel, no charge extra of it. They put me on antibiotics and some creams for a couple of days. On that Thursday, so this was Tuesday, on the Thursday, another doctor came uh, to actually my hotel with uh, a translator. So um, so the language barrier there was not ne never there because you have a translator and that's got, uh, throughout the, all of it as well. Um, so he came and just looked at my head and thought, you know what, like, yeah, he's good to go. You've got all the ticks. So on the Friday, I um, had the operation. So what happens is they pick you up again, they take you as the steps I was saying before, they shave your hair, they do the, the drawings on your head as you can see on the screen right now. And then you, if you're not happy with how it looks with like the drawing, you can change that. If you wanted to bring it down lower or whatever, and you can either choose like the skin, uh, how many grafts that you want, but they obviously advise, um, you know, by looking at your scalp and like your hair, and obviously taking into account of like your lifestyle and, and um, your age as well. So there's lots of different avenues that you can go through in terms of like hairline. Um, so yeah, and I went with about three and a half thousand grafts. And I, the, th the one thing I said to them was like, I don't want you to just take it off one small patch of my head. I'd rather you take it from a lot of the donor area, which is around the back. So as you can see, it's probably more from the side. So I didn't want it to, um, you know, affect my donor area that much. <clears throat> so that's that. And then they take you to uh, basically the hospital so when you go into the hospital they uh, the room that you itself you have like your own bathroom in there um, and the procedure that it is is basically they numb your head with anesthetics you are actually awake depending on how many grass that you want I was there for about seven hours but you do have a bit of a half time break to have some food and just a bit of a um, you know chill out time just because obviously it's quite intense the most intense thing was was probably the anesthetics because obviously it's very painful but in terms of sort of actually then taking the graphs out and things like that you don't actually feel anything but you can hear a lot of it it's a bit like the dentist um as i can imagine well not imagine like kind of experience was 
that you can't really feel anything but you can actually hear everything which is a bit gruesome and stuff but I actually fell asleep during the <laughs> during the procedure um, in and out of sleep because obviously it's quite demanding on your body so that's kind of that point once the, the procedure's done they then take you back to the hotel they drop you off they bandage you up they give you loads of medication to take on that night as well as going forward then you have to there's a couple of rules that you have to imply you have to sleep at a 45 degree angle you can't get it wet you can't expose it to sunlight or anything for a few days then the next day they take you into the clinic again where they do the consultation and things they literally uh, undress the the your head and then they clean it for you and then basically you're literally like this on the next day and that's the kind of procedure on the way but other than that guys if you have any questions literally shoot me a message on the um, on the instagram or even leave them down below but that is my sort of experience within the hair transplant so this is day number six as you can see it's pretty still the scabbing is coming off so i haven't actually washed my hair um as of yet with like shampoo so you get a lot of aftercare and then in terms of going forward after you've left this number you still have the the conversations with the guys through whatsapp you can send them pictures but basically like a a weekly update they're always on to you so um, it's just re really reassuring so you know a lot of people hear horror stories and so did I about like you know going abroad I went by myself I'd probably recommend somebody going with you just because it's quite full-on um, in terms of just like you know not allowed to bend over and things like that and just like you know try just make it a bit more comfortable it is a bit lonely especially when I was there for six days or supposed to be there for four um, but yeah other than that guys make sure you hit the thumbs up subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all in the next video